So before we talk a little bit about how we would treat this patient, uh, let's review some of the data that we have. The major data that we have, of course, is from Impassion 130 in the metastatic setting with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, this trial randomized patients who had uh, metastatic breast cancer that was confirmed triple negative in the first line setting uh, and were who were at least 12 months from their adjuvant taxane therapy uh, to receive nabpaclitaxel with the tezolizumab or placebo in a one-to-one -one ratio uh, with uh, co-primary endpoints of progression-free survival and overall survival in the overall intent to treat population and the patient that had pd one positive tumors based on the SP142 assay that is 1% or greater is positive in immune cells. Um, as everyone knows, this data led to the first regulatory approval of a checkpoint inhibitor for patients with triple negative uh, breast cancer. <coughs> Uh, patients who had PDL1 positive disease, which represented 41% of the population, had a modest improvement in progression free survival, uh, as you can see, going from 5.3 to 7.5 months, uh, and, but had a seven month, month absolute improvement in overall survival. The statistical design uh, had been based on whether or not you saw an overall survival benefit in the overall population. You could look at the PDL1 positive population, but because of the uh, PFS benefit in this population, we did look at the overall survival uh, benefit, which was still, I think, clinically important, despite not being true to the statistical design. And, and interestingly, in the patients whose tumors were pd one IC negative, there was absolutely no benefit from adding the atezolizumab. Uh, we also looked to see whether or not there was a difference in pd one status in the primary versus metastatic uh, tissues. And it's hard to know. Uh, the most patients had tumor collected within two months of starting study therapy. So a lot of patients had de novo metastatic disease. It appeared that primary tissue was more likely to be positive at 62% versus metastatic tissue, but it didn't matter uh, which tissue you used in order to determine whether a patient was pd one positive. We still saw a benefit from the addition of atezolizumab. Interestingly, uh, the pd one status by anatomic site varied some, and in other tumors also, liver appears to be less likely to be positive, and although we had a small number of samples, that was true here as well. Uh, we did look at exploratory immune biomarkers, uh, including whether or not there was a difference in patients based on whether their tumor cells were positive, uh, whether uh, the stromal TILs or tumor infiltrating lymphocytes were more important, um, and we also looked at patients based on their BRCA status. It turned out that PDL1 was the most potent predictor of benefit from atezolizumab, um, and that most patients, the, the other factors mattered only if the tumor was also PDL1 IC positive. Immune related adverse events also, of course, are a very important part of assessing any uh, new uh, immune targeted therapy. Um, and as you can see, rash was the most common toxicity, both overall, but also requiring systemic corticosteroids. There are other toxicities, however, including almost any organ. They're just much less common with about a 1% uh, risk of hepatitis or adrenal insufficiency and about a 2% risk of pneumonitis. Hypothyroidism is very common, but we don't usually treat it with steroids, so that's why it looks relatively less common here. But when I mean very common, these toxicities all are at less than 5% rates overall, although some studies have reported a higher rate of adrenal insufficiency in early stage breast cancer. Colitis is also seen, and it's important to identify this early to avoid serious toxicities. And then recently, there have been some uh, neurologic complications that have been uh, reported as well, uh, both uh, central as, as well as in the spinal cord. Uh, they weren't seen very frequently, however, and certainly in the spinal cord, not at all in, in Passion 130. We also looked at concordance between different assays because the 22C3 assay as well as SP263 are used with other checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, it turns out that more tumor samples are positive based on these other two assays, uh, and they're looked at uh, tumor cells and immune cells a little bit differently based on which test is being done. So they're not very concordant, although you include almost all of the SP142 cases if you look at 22C3 positivity or 263 positivity. Uh, and when we looked again in a retrospective uh, subset analysis in this group of patients who were biomarker evaluable, it still appeared that being SP142 positive was more likely uh, to predict benefit for in both in PFS and OS with the addition of atezolizumab. And you can see that really striking difference in the top uh, curves versus the uh, curves that looked at 2C3 and uh, SP263, uh, where there didn't appear to be a benefit in overall survival based on positivity. 
Um, and then there are a number of studies that are actually looking at immune checkpoint inhibitors in metastatic triple negative breast cancer, as shown here. Uh, a number of impassioned trials that are looking at alternate pathways, uh, alternate uh, chemotherapy partners, so paclitaxel. Um, and then in patients who've relapsed earlier uh, after their adjuvant or neoadjuvant therapy, uh, platinum gemcitabine. Um, and uh, then there are a couple of studies that are looking at pembrolizumab. Uh, one trial that looked at uh, pembrolizumab as a single agent compared to a menu of different chemotherapy options that has been reported and showed no difference, but there was a suggestion of a benefit in patients who had a very uh, high scores for pdl one so at a score of 20 uh, or higher. Uh, and then Keno 355 is the phase three trial where there's been a press release on February 12th uh, that said that pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy significantly improved PFS compared to chemotherapy alone, but only in the population of patients whose tumors expressed pdl one with a CPS score of 10 or greater uh, and we were looking at the one or greater as a standard positive test. This trial is uh, a, the first of its kind that looked at alternate, that has been reported and has looked at alternate chemo partners, uh, NAB paclitaxel or paclitaxel or carbogem in patients who relapse six months or greater after their adjuvant taxane. So it does potentially open up a new window uh, for treatment options in patients who are earlier relapsers. And we expect to see this data at an upcoming uh, meeting uh, presented.